Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I've got a really exciting and special video for you today. I'm going to be talking about the Sonia G brushes that are new and I believe exclusive to Beautylish. So if you're interested in hearing more about these brushes, then just keep on watching. So I think it was maybe just a couple days or maybe last week that Beautylish sent out an email introducing to me a beauty blogger named Sonia G and she has a blog and an Instagram account under the name of Sweet Makeup Temptations. It's someone that I had never seen before. I'm surprised I'd never come across her before, but she is someone who is a brush expert, if you will. She owns more than 2,000 brushes. She has the most beautiful beauty room setup I've ever seen. And then, you know, a couple days later, they had an email announcing that she came out with her own brush line. When I heard that, I was so intrigued because I just love someone who embraces their obsession, who just dives deep, who just goes, you know, head first, no holds bar, just goes right into it, which she obviously has done with makeup brushes. So when I heard that she was developing her own brush line, I was like, this I need to check out. So um, she released her eight brushes as part of a set and I purchased them off of Beautylish. They were about $364, I think, for the eight brushes, something something around there. So Beautylish, in their amazing way, sent these brushes overnight. So I ordered them, I don't know, a couple days ago and I got it the next day, like first thing in the morning. I was so excited. And I just wanted to mention that these brushes are beautiful, yes. Um, but I thought that they were probably gonna come in some sort of case or something. But they were delivered in this um, Beautylish cotton zipper bag, which is, which is very nice, but I really thought that um, for such a special, beautiful brush set, I really thought that there was gonna be some, I don't know, some sort of case for them, something, you know, maybe like the Wayne Goss, the, the tubes or, or something like that, um, but they didn't. They were, you know, just wrapped up and then put into the Beautylish cotton bag. So that was a little bit of a disappointment, but I was like, all right, let's, let's get through that. Let's just get to the nitty gritty. Let's get to the brushes. So these brushes are made out of maple wood. They're fairly thick and I find them to be very, very comfortable. And off of the website, I read that they are um, lacquered, I think with four layers, almost like an automobile. So that's what gives it this nice glossy shine. Um, all of the brushes are animal hair. I believe except for this base one brush, which is this uh, kind of cream liquid brush. Um, it says it's made out of goat hair and PBT, which I think is a synthetic. So I think this is a duo fiber brush. So let me just introduce each of the brushes to you. In my demo, I'm gonna kind of obviously demonstrate each brush to you, but go into a little bit more depth, the motivation and the inspiration behind each brush. So let me start with base one. Again, this is the uh, cream liquid brush. This is the, I think, duo fiber brush and this is meant for cream, liquid foundations, or highlighters, or bronzers, whatever sort of cream product you have. So this is the base one brush. Then we have the Sculpt One brush, which is this really fat fan brush, and this is made out of goat hair. And then we have a Face Two brush, which again is made out of goat hair. And then we have a Sculpt Three brush, which is like a little fan brush that is made out of dyed goat hair. And then we have four eye brushes. So the pencil brush, here, which is like a little pointy brush, is made out of blue squirrel hair. Very, very soft. Uh, same with the crease one brush. This is basically like a longer version of the pencil brush. And then we have the builder one brush, which is like oval shape, comes to kind of like a flat tip here. And this is in dyed goat hair. And this is the worker one brush, which is like a very interestingly shaped blender brush and this is in a dyed goat hair as well. So those are the eight brushes that come in this set. So one thing I forgot to mention in my kind of wrap up section of the video is that these brushes didn't shed at all. This was my, in the demo you'll see that it's my first time using these brushes. So I was fully expecting at least a few bristles to be coming off. Um, that's, I think, generally very, very typical. So I thought that was pretty amazing. I think that speaks to the high quality of these brushes. So if you're interested in watching me use these brushes for the first time and then give you some thoughts on these, then just keep on watching. So I've already put primer on and I'm ready to go in with some foundation and I have the La Mer Soft Fluid Foundation um, and I'm gonna go in, I'm just gonna kind of dot that all over my face and I'm gonna use this base 
one brush and I'm just gonna read to you what it says off of the Beautylish site. It says, this brush's shape and density works beautifully with liquids and creams. It's strong, easy to clean, and quick drying, but also airy enough to blend blush, bronzer, and highlighter. So the brush here is Goat and PBT, which I'm gonna guess is synthetic. I'm not sure what that stands for, but I'm assuming this is a duo fiber brush. Now I'm gonna go in with the brush and I'm gonna start by swiping just to spread the foundation around. Oh, I love the feel of this brush, especially when you start buffing like this. What a beautiful application. So that was really, really wonderful. Uh, not one piece of hair shed. Uh, this is the first time I'm using it, so I was expecting a couple, you know, that usually happens. Not one. And I used, so I pumped out like a pump and a half of my foundation, and I usually use pretty much all of it. I have this much left over, which is probably about half a pump, and I don't need it. So I feel like this brush does not soak up too much of the product, which is amazing. This feels so good. This is beautiful. This is a great foundation brush. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put on some concealer and then we'll move into the powder products. All right, concealer is on. I'm gonna move into some powder. I have my Charlotte Tilbury pressed powder here and I'm gonna try this face two brush. This is definitely not quite as big and fluffy as I would like, but again, I'm going to read off of the uh, Beautylish website here, and it says, I believe in smaller face brushes. This one is super soft and dense, yet airy enough to be used for both sheer and heavily pigmented payoff, and this is in goat hair. So I'm going to give it a shot. I've also started to not powder my entire face because I just feel like it makes me look so dry and decrepit. So I'm going to use this and uh, powder around my eyes and just like down my T-zone. So um, this brush is definitely, um, there's like a, like a bounce to it, which is really nice. Um, and exactly like she says, it feels uh, dense, but it's definitely, um, you can see my powder kick off there, but it's definitely uh, very flexible. So this is an interesting brush for sure. I'm gonna use it to pounce because I like the springiness of these bristles. We've got one hair being shed. I think that's okay for a brand new brush. All right, well, it lays down the product really nicely. I think um, I think this is really great if you're not someone to just want to just powder your entire face with like a big fluffy brush. This is really for something that's a little bit more precise if you don't want to, you know, just sort of lay powder all over your face. I think this is pretty great because um, it's something, oh, it's a makeup artist. It's either like Patrick Ta or Jordan Liberty, like one of those huge makeup artists. And they said that one of the secrets to getting like a really beautiful uh, lip from within kind of glow and foundation is to not powder just simply powder your entire face but to do it strategically so you know he said especially for um, like more mature skin you don't want to just put down a, a mask of powder so that's when I started kind of doing just the areas that I feel like let's let's not look greasy I still want that glow but let's not look oily so you know I've been just setting around my eyes my concealer and just uh, kind of down my t-zone and maybe just very lightly over the rest of, very, very lightly over the rest of my face, just so the other powder products can kind of glide across it. But you know, not just sort of mindlessly just powdering my whole face. And I think this is perfect for that because all of my big powder brushes, you know, if I just put it here, powder gets everywhere. So this is really, really nice for that. All right, so next, this is the one I'm most interested about. This is the Sculpt One Fan Brush. And I am not generally a fan of fan brush. <laughs> I'm not a fan of fan brushes, um, especially the really wispy ones that you use to highlight. Um, I just feel like I have no control. I feel like it's just such a weird, I don't know, it's just not for me. So this one caught my eye because it's obviously not very wispy. It's a pretty dense, you can see how thick it is, pretty dense fan brush. So again, this is the Sculpt One Fan Brush. 
I wanted a fan brush that not only looks and feels good, but performs well. The dense Haku Totsuho goat bristles allow the brush to slay out while staying thick and soft. So uh, let's give this a shot. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this for um, contour. I'm gonna use this uh, Shantakai HD Perfecting Bronze Powder, which I've been using for contour. And I'm just gonna lightly dip the brush in both sides. And I'm going to swipe that underneath my cheeks. So, so far, this is definitely a more precise application than the Tom Ford bronzer brush that I usually use. Obviously, that's much more um, of a puffier, bigger head. And I think if you're looking for a much more precise contour, this is great, but it still gives you a nice diffused application without it looking too sharp. I know some people really like a sharp contour. I'm not really about that. I kind of like something that is just sort of like an airbrushed, kind of a little bit more of like a faded um, application, diffused application. What this is, I think, so much better for me in terms of contour is getting around the face because I can do this and just get it around the perimeter of my forehead when I'm working with contour. And again, I've been using the Tom Ford bronzer brush and just sort of um, laying that all over. And, and sometimes that's not what I want, especially if I'm using a contour and a separate bronzer. If I'm using a bronzer to contour, I think the Tom Ford brush is fine. You know, you just get that all over. But I think if you're gonna actually make the effort to contour separately from bronzer, this is a great tool because it's uh, definitely much more of a precise um, application and it's, and it's wonderful. Again, no sharp lines, it blends like a dream. This just applied it like a dream. This is great. Oh, I love this. It looks like I'm flicking you off though. <laughs> this is nice. I think my favorite is around the forehead. Look how easy that is. And that's it. Love this. Oh my god, I love finding good brushes. Okay, all right. I kind of like what I have going on here. I was going to add additional bronzer, but I kind of I kind of like that. I think that's enough. I think what I'm going to do is add some blush now, and I'm going to go back with the Face 2 brush. This is the brush that I used uh, with the Charlotte Tilbury powder. So I'm going to use this for blush, and I'm going to use uh, another recent favorite of mine. This is the Chantecai Compact Soli Bronzer, but it's in the shade Capri, which is very peach. For me, it's a great blush. It's not a great bronzer. It's a great blush. So I'm going to go in and pounce the brush in there. And apply that to my cheekbones. And I'm just using like a circular motion. Since this brush is uh, cut sort of, there's no, it's not really like angle, not like a typical blush brush where you want to kind of sweep. This one um, I feel like is better to buff. Blush is done. God, this is this is a great brush. I like this. I really like working in my products. That's probably why I don't like fan brushes because I feel like it just sort of lays the product down and I'm like, what's gonna happen to it? All right, so let's move into highlighter. I wanna go ahead and use this Sculpt 3 brush. So this is a smaller fan brush, but again, this one is a little bit uh, thicker than most fan brushes I've seen, which are really, really thin. Um, almost at the top, like you can kind of see through the bristles. This one is much more dense. When you go, when you kind of run your finger over this way, it feels like there's a lot of tension there. Like there's a lot of, there's not a lot of give. Um, this way, there's a lot more give. This way, there's not a lot of give. So, so this is a really interesting fan brush. Uh, again, I'm gonna read what's on the Beautylish site. This brush was designed for highlighter, but it's also a secret weapon against patchy, harsh bronzer and blush. It picks up a generous amount of product and works with control. Okay, I am sold. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the Hourglass Ambient Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette, and I'm going to use the uh, Lucent Strobe Light, which is this one over here. And I'm gonna dip the fan brush in both sides. Well, okay. This brush, 
This brush picks up a lot more product than I'm used to, so definitely be careful. It really has like, there's definitely a density to these bristles that'll really kind of work out product. And that's sort of what I've been looking for in a fan brush, because again, a fan brush doesn't work in any product. It just lays it over the top of the skin. I mean, you can sit there and kind of like rub it, but I feel like all you're doing is spreading it around. This will actually, because these bristles are denser than any other fan brush I've used, this will really work in the product, kind of massage it into the skin, and it blends it out beautifully. Wow, I think I finally found a fan brush that I like. So I'm using it lightly at first, and then I can really work it in. Almost like a dual purpose fan brush. I don't do the Cupid's bow often because I feel like it makes you look like you have a runny nose, but let's try it with this. This is amazing. I think I found my new highlighter brush. I love my ABH. I do love that Anastasia Beverly Hills A23 brush, but this, this is great. And you know it's a good brush when you just want to keep using it. <laughs> Moving on. So the rest of the brushes um, in the set are eye brushes. So let me go ahead and do my eyebrows and everything, and then I'll come back and we'll do some eyeshadow. Let's move into the eyeshadows. So we have four eyeshadow brushes here. I think I'm going to start with this one. This is the largest one. And this is the Worker One brush. Again, off of the Beautylish site. I know how hard it is to find the perfect blending brush. I designed this brush to my exact specifications. It has perfect grip and control, so it never over blends. And the brush hair is goat. Um, and I am very intrigued by this brush because it's not completely round, but it's not totally pinched either. It's like right in between. It's like this oval kind of uh, shape. Before I got the Wayne Goss brush set and even the Tom Ford blending brushes, all the eyeshadow brushes I got were slightly pinched. Um, for some reason, you know, when I'm going back and forth like this, I kind of like one that has a little bit more of a flat, a flatness to it, almost like that fan brush over my forehead. I just felt like that worked a little bit better. I have a feeling I'm going to use this brush uh, for a bunch of different applications, but I just want to use this to lay down uh, a lid color. I'm going to use the Tom Ford Blonde Venus. I'm dipping it in and picking up a lot of product. These bristles are very, very firm. There's a lot of like pushback, so they're not totally flimsy. It's hard to tell how well that brush worked with a color that is pretty much my skin color. So let's keep going. Um, I kind of wanted to do a smoky kind of navy eye today. Don't know why. Let me lay this color down as like a transition shade. This is Vertigo. This is another ultra suede finish by Tom Ford. And I'm gonna use this same Worker One brush. And I'm gonna focus this more in the crease area. Again, what I really like about this brush is that it's really dense. Um, so the bristles themselves are really soft but the application isn't soft, if that makes any sense, because it's, it's, so, um, it's so dense. So I think it's great to lay down product. If you wanna lay it down really heavily, you kind of press a little bit harder and then just sweep it across to blend. I think if you were to press down too hard to blend, it, it doesn't really work. You have to use like just the tips of the bristles because of the density. Uh, just the tips of the bristles to blend out the color and you get this really soft kind of diffused look. Maybe I should go in with this Builder One brush and this is another um, oval shaped brush. The bristles are a lot shorter. Let me hold it up actually next to one another. Um, and then you can see that the top is, it becomes much flatter so there's not a lot of poof to this brush. And again, off of the site, it says, this is the brush of my dreams. I love shimmers and metallics, but only when I can control the placement and application. The shape works magic with difficult textures. Okay, so I have this navy shade uh, from Tom Ford, and this is in the vinyl finish, so there's a little bit of glitz and glimmer in this particular shade. So I'm gonna give this a shot and I'm going to kind of lay this all over my lid here. Again, I'm gonna try and do a smoky eye.
this is definitely a um, swipe, a patent swipe um, kind of brush. This is definitely not a back and forth brush. Well, that was pretty easy. So that was the Builder One brush, and she is right. Very, very precise application. I made that line so easily. So we've got two more brushes here, and these are round in shape. And one is pencil one, which is a smaller one, and then one is crease one. So I'm gonna go ahead and use crease one, and I'm gonna go into silver screen, which is another Tom Ford shadow in the sateen finish. And I'm gonna use this and see if I can kind of blend these two colors together, the blue vinyl and the vertigo, just to see what's gonna happen. So I'm going to just dip this brush in um, and kind of roll it in here. Okay, I think that was the most effortless blending I've ever done. All right, let's do the other eye just to make sure that was not a fluke. I'm really impressed by this um, crease one. This could be my favorite eyeshadow brush in there. I like the other two a lot. They're beautiful. They did what they did. Like this builder one, super precise. But this, this just blended between those two colors effortlessly. So now we have pencil one, and I guess I need a darker shade. You know what? Actually, I'm going to use the blue velvet, and I'm just going to use this on my lower lash line. I'm going to try this brush out. So I'm going to just dip right in. And this brush, it, it the bristles come straight up, and then they come to a point like pretty quickly. And I think that's what's helping with this application. Okay, I usually have a very hard time applying shadow, you know, kind of neatly or where I want it to go on my bottom lash line. I usually end up putting some in my waterline, which I don't like to do because that really irritates my eyes, um, or I end up with it kind of just all over. This was great. This is, I'm not even super close to my mirror and I just did that and done. I almost want to like drop the mic with these brushes. They are fantastic. They are fantastic. So I'm gonna curl my lashes, put on some mascara, put on some lipstick, and I will be right back. Okay guys, I am back and I am ready to give you my final thoughts on these brushes. I love them. And I know a lot of you are gonna ask me, well, are these better than the Wayne Goss brushes? Are these better than the Tom Ford brushes? Um, my simple answer is that they're so different, it would almost be like comparing apples to oranges. But I will say this, I think this brush is probably my new favorite foundation brush, um, beating out my hourglass, which you know I love, but this took up so much less product and I feel like it took a lot less work to blend in. I did a couple swipes and then a couple round, you know, circular motions and makeup was done. Love that. This brush, I love for contour. Like I said, I love doing this over my forehead and kind of being done. You know, with all of my bigger, fluffier brushes, I felt like I was always kind of like brushing away or trying to, you know, maneuver to make sure I'm only getting it here and kind of not all over. This brush I really liked. I thought it was great for pouncing because it is, um, it kind of has, not a flat top obviously, it's slightly domed, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't come to a point. I think it's awesome for working product in this way. I don't really like brushes shaped this way for swiping motions because I feel like it's a little bit too dense for that, like I'm just moving product around. So if you like to work um, work your products in, your powder products in like I do, I think this is great for that. This fan brush, this one surprised me the most. I thought this was actually the brush, you know, when I sat down to purchase the set, I said, am I going to use every single brush in there? And I looked, you know, I looked and I read through all the different ones and I thought they're all so unique, except for this one, except that it's a little bit of a smaller size. But what I didn't realize was that it's a little bit thicker than most fan brushes and that the bristles that are used are definitely a little bit more dense. And I know the purpose for a fan brush is generally for a very light, kind of wispy application, but I like that this has a little bit more oomph to it and that I can work the products in. So this is probably the only fan brush I like and will ever use. And you saw in my demo how easily I was able to create this um, eye look, which is pretty smoky, which can be very, very tricky sometimes, but 
this is a wonderful like hybrid brush it's so much more dense than any other eye brush I've used. So I think there's definitely gonna be a learning curve with this um, because I think you're gonna to want to pat products in, but if you want to blend, at least with this first try of mine, um, you really wanna use a light hand with blending. It's not like a typical fluffy round blending brush where you just can go in and just work the product out. You know, I think you wanna use like a light hand with it because it's so dense. This. I definitely need to use again with what was described on the Beautylish site with something more um, glittery and those hard to pick up shades um, but I used it with a pretty metallic shimmery shade and it just worked it just worked beautifully so this is again a really interesting interesting brush and then these two brushes the round uh, round shaped ones the pencil and the crease the crease while looking pretty ordinary, like an ordinary kind of crease brush. I think I actually have a super old Shu Umura brush that's shaped just like this. And um, I used to use it as like a pencil brush because of the sharp tip. But as a crease brush, oh my God, this was really, really cool. I mean, I think it, it just blended out my, my transition and my heavy navy shade. I think this blended out perfectly. And this was great pencil brush. It did this really, really seamlessly. I know these brushes are gonna be available individually, um, so if I were to suggest a couple brushes from here, I think if you're into using uh, brushes to put on your liquid cream products, I recommend this one highly. This, again, is the base one brush. This, I believe, is the duo fiber brush, and I just love it. This was amazing. And um, this, if you're into contouring, um, or like a more precise application for your uh, bronzer, this is your guy. Especially if you have that forehead thing. Um, if you really like to kind of contour out your forehead, this is your friend. This brush, while I liked it very much, you know, you could probably pass on this one. I feel like you could probably, um, you know, find similar ones in different lines. Um, this fan brush, again, I really loved it. I think this is great. For me, this was a surprise for a fan brush, but you know, do you really need this one for highlighter? I like my ABH one. And as for the eye brushes, they are really, really cool. I think this crease one brush worked the best, but I'm wondering if maybe you can find something like these two somewhere else. I like them a lot because they actually worked really, really easily for me. And I don't know if they are maybe shaped a little bit more uniquely than other kind of pencil crease brushes that I've seen probably I don't feel like I've seen ones that come to quite a point like this these two brushes are really unique to me because again they're not round but they're not completely pinched so I think if you were to try the eye brushes I would say try these two this is the worker one and the builder one just because they're so unique um, but if you're really into these types of brushes, the crease one was great. I mean, I really liked all the eye brushes, honestly. Um, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, if you don't want to get all of them, which should you get? Um, this one, the Worker One brush, I think is very cool. I think this could probably do a lot of things for you, but I think there's gonna be a bit of a learning curve because of how um, dense these bristles are. I think they're gonna be pretty different from anything you've used before, but it was very, very cool. So I loved these brushes. I think they're so unique. I love the handles. I love how um, thick the handles are. I love how they're weighted. They need to feel good. You know, they need to feel really, really good in the hand. And I love this. And th this, if I were to compare these to Wayne Goss, these have Wayne Goss beat by a million miles because this is special. You know, this maple wood is really special. The ombre effect on here is really special. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you have any questions down below about any of these brushes. I believe they go on sale individually, uh, probably in January, I think is what I uh, saw online. So please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video.